Hi. Today, we're going to be talking about why your statistical analyses might be completely wrong. I know the title sounds like a clickbait, but trust me, it is not. My name is Sean. I'm a statistical consultant in the McArdle GC3 lab at USC. So first, when do we use statistics? We use statistics when we want to summarize data in a relatively simple manner. Let's say we have 200 data points. If we have 200 samples and make it into a table, then the table will look like table one. If we were to plot them, then the plot will look like figure one. Still, there are so many numbers and so many dots that we have to process. So we want some numbers. We want to find some numbers. We call them measures that represent data the best. And those measures, we're going to be talking about a measure of location and a measure of scale. A popular example of a measure of location is the mean, the average. And a popular example of a measure of scale is the standard deviation or the variance. So let's see how those measures represent the data. So we have two samples. Data one and data two. Data one has three, three, four, five, seven, and 10. The mean of data one is 5.3. Looks about right. And the standard deviation of data one is 2.7. Yeah, that also looks about right. What about data two? Data two has three, three, four, five, seven, and now 1,000. Now the mean of data two is 170.33. And the standard deviation is 406.45. So do you think the mean of 170 and the standard deviation of 406 represent data 2? I don't think so. Why is that? Well, obviously, because that 1,000 is something called an outlier. And let's take a look at that outlier in terms of a distribution point of view. We have two curves. We have two similar curves. One is normal, the other is not. They both look normal. They're both bell-shaped and they're both symmetric. And it turned out that the dotted curve is something called standard normal distribution. It is a normal curve with the mean zero and variance one. And now we look at the solid line. The solid curve is something called mixed normal distribution. It's not exactly normal, but approximately normal. But still, it is not normal. And the two curves look alike. They are very close to each other. But this time, the solid line has the mean of zero, and the variance is this time 10.9. So just a slight departure from a normal distribution can make a huge difference in terms of standard deviation or variance. So what about it? So just a small just a small departure from a standard from a normal distribution can inflate your standard deviation or variance. What happens then is you get lower power you assume that your distribution distribution is going to be normal, but in fact it's not, then you get lower powers, which means your sample size planning is going to be wrong. And also, the confidence intervals for your regression coefficients or your test statistics are going to be way too wide, which means that your estimates are not going to be accurate. And also, the type one error, you thought you fixed it. It's not exactly 0.05 or 0.1 or 0.01 that you want it to be. So what is robust statistics? Well, before we jump into robust statistics, we need to talk about conventional statistics, conventional methods first, the methods be uh, developed before 1960s. 
Well, they are they are careless about outliers and also assumption violations. And there are three of some, there are three most common assumptions: independence, normality, and homoscedasticity. And normality and homoscedasticity assumptions are almost always never met. Unless your data, your sample is from a controlled simulation environment. Then what happened in 1960? Well, first, mathematicians started using computer simulations to validate conventional methods. And then they figured out, oh, a lot of times conventional methods don't work. And also, a famous paper written by John Tukey in 1960 was published. A survey of sample from contaminated normal uh, contaminated distributions. This paper basically means that a small departure, a slight departure from a normal distribution to heavy tail distribution can mess up a lot of things. So then now we're talking about robust statistics, robust measure of location and scale, robust to outliers and robust methods, robust to the assumption violations. Robust methods are also called non-parametric methods. And they are basically the methods you don't even need to care about those assumptions. So life is a lot easier now. How and why your statistical analyses go wrong? Well, first, Using any pre-implemented pre functions in your in the software, you name any statistical software, R, Python, SAS, SPS, SPSS, and plus. The pre-implemented functions are most likely going to be conventional methods. And they don't filter out outliers. And they don't know how to deal with assumption violations. And also part of researchers' fault First, you don't seem to plot your data when you're done with data collection. If you plot the data, you instantly visualize the leverage points and outliers. And also, when you run conventional parametric methods where the assumptions are very important, you don't really check for those assumptions. You don't really check the assumptions and just run it. And finally, conventional methods seem to work. You have your data, you code, run it. Of course, it's not going to work. So you debug it for a couple of days, and then you run it again, and then voila, you get results. You get results, you get estimates, you get standard errors, you get p-values, you get test, test statistics, and they look believable, but they're not actually. And then. Why do people still use conventional methods? Well, the biggest reason is inertia. People have been using conventional methods for way too long, for centuries. And also, there are some more problems. First, there's no one minute explanation for why you need robust methods. And second, you don't seem to recognize what's wrong with your analyses. And finally, Robust methods are not so much intuitive. For example, why can't, why can't you just remove outliers? Well, it doesn't work that way. Spoiler alert, next chapter, we're gonna be talking about outliers. So where do I learn all about robust, stat robust statistics? Well, you got two options. First, I got you. We just covered chapter zero robust or introduction to robust statistics. And there are going to be more workshops. This is a series of workshops about robust statistics. Chapter one, we're going to be next chapter, which is chapter one, we're going to be talking about outliers, how to, how to detect them and how to deal with them. In chapter two, we're going to be talking about normality assumption or normal distributions. Chapter three, we're going to be talking about students' t-test or t-test. And in chapter three, I'm going to specifically going to be talking about why you should never use an R function t.test. And in chapter four, we're going, to, we're going to talk about ANOVA. And in chapter four, I'm going to talk about why you should never use 
our an R function ANOVA. And in chapter five, we're going to be talking about regression. And in chapter five, I'm going to talk about why you should never use an R function LM or GLM. Second option, if you are a USC student, a USC grad student, then I recommend you taking my advisor's class, my advisor, Dr. Van Wilcox, Psych 501 and 502. I'd like to personally thank my, advis my advisor, Dr. Van Wilcox, for providing me this entire resource. This, this series of workshop is from his lecture, Psych 501, and his book, his textbook, Introduction to Robust Estimation and Hypothesis Testing. Thank you very much.